Welcome to this study this morning, the second study this week, and uh, we're going to move on to Ibzan, Elan, and Abdon, unless they're, whoops, I didn't record. I didn't hit that, so let's try this again. Good morning, everyone, again, and um, welcome to this morning's study. Um, we're going to move on to Ibzan, Elan, and Abdon, uh, to their lines, uh, but um, we don't know if we're going to obviously have to review some things if there's questions. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. And we just ask for your presence as we open your word together. We know, Lord, that there are many things uh, that draw our attention. But as we focus our attention upon your word, we ask that the things of this earth can be set aside, and that we can be, can be transported into heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I pray for each person and their personal struggles, and I ask, Lord, that you can teach us, that we can learn of the meekness and lowliness of Christ, that we can take up our cross daily, and that his character can be seen upon us. Give us understanding for the times that we are in, um, for this movement, um, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. And um, now, the study that we did yesterday, I, I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, there was so much detail, so much information. I don't feel I did a good presentation of it. But I think we put enough together that when we look at that it, during the camp meeting, um, that those things will come together. So one of the things we learned uh, over the last week is that we could take the Hebrew numbers and they could be used as spans of time. And particularly, we took uh, Jephthah and Shibboleth and added those together, and that's exactly 30 years. So it's... Uh, uh, 33.16 for Jephthah and 7.4 or 7.641 for Shibboleth. And those together are 10,957, which is exactly the same number of days um, from November 9th, 2000, or 1989 to November 9th, uh, 2019. So uh, to me, that was very remarkable. Um, but now as we, we move on to uh, this waymark here, Ibzen, Elan, and Abdon, uh, these three, again, we don't have tons of information. There's many verses to cover uh, this line. And um, uh, we've looked at this before, and we've drawn the line out uh, quite clearly. But there are going to be things that we're going to glean as we go through it this time. Now, uh, before we get into this, was there any questions about yesterday's study um, or things, observations? I know we didn't have lots of conversation yesterday, but and Dwight's still not here, um, so he may not have a good internet connection. So people are fine with moving on to Ibzen, Elon, and Abdon. Okay. So we're going to read these verses. Uh, Judges 12, verse 8. And after him, Ibzen of Bethlehem judged Israel. And he had 30 sons and 30 daughters. And he sent abroad and took in 30 daughters from abroad for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then died Ibzan and was buried at Bethlehem. And after him, Elon the Zebulonite judged Israel. And he judged Israel 10 years. And Elon the Zebulonite died and was buried in Agilon in the country of Zebulun. And after him, Abdon the son of Hillel, a uh, Pirithonite, judged Israel. And he had 40 sons and 30 nephews, 
that rode on three score and ten ass colts, and he judged Israel eight years. And Abdon the son of Hillel, the Pirithonite, died and was buried in Pirithon in the land of Ephraim, in the mount of the Amalekites. So before we actually look at the line, the things that we noticed here before that were really important uh, was the length of time that each of these judge, judges judged. So you're going to have Ibsen, um, and he's going to judge uh, for, for 10 years. Elon is going to judge um, for eight years. And, and I get this right. No, well, who's seven years here? Uh, I did the, I did the, oh, pardon me. Ibsen's seven years, Elon's 10 years, and Abdon's eight years. And this would be, um, when you go 10 and 8, of course, that's how you would say 18. So we have 7, 18. We have July 18th in this uh, judge. Now, as far as how we place these judges, because we had placed Othniel and Ehud as the arrival of the first, uh, Ehud and Shamgar as the arrival of the first angel, Deborah and Barak as the formalization of that angel, Gideon as the empowerment of that angel, Tola and Jr. the arrival of the second, Jephthah as the formalization of the second angel's message, and Ibzan, Elan, and Abdon are the empowerment of the second angel's message. And then we had given dates for each of these. The date that we mark in the line of the judges for Ibzan, Elan, and Abdon is December 25th, 2021. So we're zooming into that way mark, and we see this symbol of July 18, 2020, which, of course, is the arrival of the second angel. This is then the empowerment of that angel. And it's going to happen at the end of the 777 days. So, so we will look at that. Okay. Now, we have um, another symbol. That's the 30, 30, and... Um, so we have the 30 sons, 30 daughters, and he took in, so he has 30 daughters-in-law that he brings in for his 30 sons. So we have the 30-30-30 symbol. And that symbol we have seen uh, previous, so that's going to be in uh, which stories do we have the 30-30 and 30 in? going to have it in Samson. And where else? We have it in Jair's story, too, in uh, Judges 10-4. 30 sons, 30 ascals, 30 cities. Yeah, so that's going to be in Judges 10-4, as she notes. That's Jair. And that's another one where we just have, you know, we have two judges that are one way mark. They're, they're put together. Another very short uh, section to deal with their lines. But... Now, with the 30, 30, 30, what did we do? How did we address the 30? So we took the number uh, 30, 30, 30 as uh, 303,030. Right? That's how we did it. And we divided it by 12, yep, as Ar Aran's put there in the chat, and you get this number, 25,252.5. So it gives us the 252 and the 525, which represent the 777. Now, we know in Tola and Jair, um, yeah, and Samuel's noted it too, we added the numbers. Well, we didn't really add them. We 
we didn't have 90 divided by 12, right? So we just put them together in a string of 30s. And of course, in Tola and Jair, that makes a lot of sense in that uh, Tola and Jair are 252 days from the start of the 7-7. And then they go 525 days to December 25th, 2021. Now that's that's the arrival of the second angel. Now in the empowerment of the second angel, it makes sense that we have that same symbol again, the 30-30-30. That's going to be the end of the 777 chiasm. Right? So, so if we add 252 and 525, we get 777. So at the end, we're going to have that. And and it's pretty interesting that we we have that show up uh, here. And, um, uh, you know, so in Ibs and Elan and Abdon, and we also have it in uh, the story of uh, Tola and Jair, and we also are going to have it in Samson. So we're going to have it three times in the story of the judges. The other symbol that we looked at, um, so those are 30 sons in um, Elon. What's going to be noted is that he had 40 sons and 30 nephews. And again, it's going to refer to uh, this time, just like it does in Tola and Jair, uh, particularly Jair, that, you know, it's going to be numbering uh, these ascals, right? So there in Judges 10.4, it's going to talk about how he has these 30 sons that ride on 30 ascals, right? And this is going to be the same thing here in Judges 12, verse 14, but it's going to be 40 sons and 30 nephews, and they have three score and 10 ascals. And so we have there the 70. So why do we have the 70 here in this story of Ibzan, Elan, and Abd? So we have the, the division of the 777, 252, 525. We have the July 18, 2020 symbol, and then we have this 70. Does anybody remember why what we thought was significant about this? Okay, so let's take a look. Some of this stuff I don't even remember. Which is why we have to go over it again. Okay, so here's what we're talking about. We have uh, the judges line here above. And you can see where we have Ibs and Elan and Abdon. It's the way mark of December 25th, 2021. And... Um, there's a number of things we know. We have these different way marks, which we have to remember what they are. Um, and I don't know if I remember them all. Uh, now, one of the things we did about uh, did with um, Ibsen and, and Abdon. So we we took the gematria of their names, fifty two and thirty six, and so we multiplied those together and we get 1872. So we should know that from 52, 52 years. And we should also know, right, 36 is one-tenth of a prophetic year. Um, now Elon adds up to 46, right, um, which we didn't put in a calculation here at all, but that's what it does. And then we... Um, Looked at the different years, seven years, 10 years, eight years. You can see that there for each of them. I'm just going to zoom in a little more so people on a uh, smaller screen can maybe see it a bit better. Now, um, now, this one came about as we were looking at some specific events. So we, we, we know when we have a line, we have messages and um, 
the first and the second message with the third arriving. And, and sometimes we place in the fourth there, though we don't usually go into detail on that. We will with the story of Samson. And, and this line, we're going to begin at December 6, 2020. So even though we have that symbol of the 30, 30, 30 being, you know, the, um, the 777, that's 252 and 525, uh, what we have done here is we have, have just taken this period of 749 days. So that's going to be from December 6, 2020 to December 5th, 2022. And um, so we have a December, which is the 12th day of the sixth month in 2020, 20th day of the ninth month on the biblical calendar. We have one year later, that's going to be the second angel arriving, December 25th, 2021. That's going to be the 20th day of the ninth month as well on the biblical calendar. So that's technically one biblical year. And then from the second angel arriving to the uh, third angel arriving is going to be one year on our calendar, December 25th, 2021 to December 25th, 2022. And, and that date's going to be the first day of the 10th month. That's what's being noted there. So if we, we start to look at this and we remember these various um, uh, lines, you know, we start to see these, these common patterns occur. We're going to recognize the first day of the 10th month coming from the story of Ezra, as well as the 20th day of the ninth month, right? And there's that call, right, three days to come to Jerusalem. And they arrive in, in this great rain on the 20th day of the ninth month. And they confess their marriage to the strange wives. And then they set up this divorcement from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. So we can see here that this is also this story in Ezra. Right? So that should be clear. <clears throat> so we started at a time of the end. So we mark a time of the end as being December 6, 2020. It's the 20th day of the ninth month, right? Um, so one year before the 20th day of the ninth month on December 25th, 2021. So, I mean, that point always needs to be emphasized in that um, when the, when FFA, you know, decided uh, to, um, you know, give out this declaration, right? They made this declaration. I mean, they obviously did not consider the symbols that they were offering to us in doing that. They're not saying, hey, we're going to do this on December 6 because it's, it's a 126 and we're going to do it because it's also the 20th day of the ninth month, right? Because they're rejecting the symbolic use of numbers on that day you know, these dates. So so they obviously are not doing it in, in intentionally in any way. Um, but it just happens in God's providence that they, they do it on that date. And they probably had planned to release the declaration later because we were still doing this study on Daniel chapter um, 11, the first few verses. But it, I believe it was the incident on the 5th of December that is Daniel um, Vanderhorst giving his personal testimony regarding, you know, all of these coincidences of numbers in his life that had led in his conviction regarding this message and that they shut it down. Um, I would think that that's why it, it sort of forced their hand to release this declaration on December 6th. So even then it wasn't something that was, uh, I believe, thought ahead of time because they had to cancel cancel the uh, the study in the morning that, you know, at the last minute uh, to release this declaration and block all of these different people, me included, who they saw as a problem. So, so we have that symbol there, right? Um, 
So the question is, if we're having this, this symbol there, there is a darkness that precedes this symbol. And what is that darkness? What's the darkness that precedes the 20th day of the ninth month in the story of Ezra? The taking of strange wives. Right. So it's going to be the marriage to these strange wives. And we're taking that symbol to represent what? What is the symbol? All the clothes that we hold. Okay. Well, particularly how we study God's word. Right. And that's going to be the conflict that occurs. So are we going to use the Protestant method of Bible study? So when I first became an Adventist and I read um, the SDA Bible commentary, which I, I believe I borrowed from uh, the church library. So I, I got the first volume because I didn't own it. And I borrowed it from the church library. They had it there. And, and I read the introduction to the Bible commentary. And they're going to talk about how to study the Bible, right? Uh, the historical grammatical method, right? This is the, the method that they got from Protestantism. Uh, not the historical critical, even though they're very close. Um, yeah. So taking away doctrines that are controversial in God's word, uh, Samuel says. Um, and I guess in, in some ways. So, for instance, they talked about how not to study the Bible. And one of the things that they say is we shouldn't look for any hidden meanings in the text. We shouldn't be looking at uh, anything that comes from a gematria, for instance, anything that comes from Babylon, right? That's the way that they understood it. Um, you know, this sort of mystical study of the scriptures. And we would agree that... Uh, this idea of mystical in the sense of secret, something that contradicts the plain study of God's word should never be entertained. That is, we don't believe that we can look into a story in the Bible and say, even though this story says this in its external form, in its internal form, it has hidden something that actually contradicts what it's saying in the external form, right? So we would never teach that. We would never teach that there's something hidden in God's word that contradicts the plain teachings of God's word. Right? So that would be mysticism. But in, in approaching this in the commentary, in Adventists and Protestants, what they're doing is they're also throwing out the baby with the bathwater in the sense that there is something that is there that had been perverted by Satan and perverted for the purpose that there is light there, that God does use numbers, right? That the numbers of, of, of the gematria of verses, the gematria of names, um, that these things can apply, the symbols of dates, all of these things are in the Bible for a reason, but they're not going to contradict what God's word plainly states. And I think that that is the important point. And so what, what Christians have done is they've looked at these mis, the misuse of numbers, of hidden things in scriptures, and then just said, we're not going to have anything to do with it at all. And that's what they do on December uh, 6, 2020, basically is they just say that this is not of God. And so they have allied themselves with the Adventist church. They've allied themselves actually with Parminder even, um, but also with the Protestant churches. So the darkness there we say has to do with the Protestant teaching. And so on December 6, 2020, they're going to, in a sense, show their colors they're going to show that that they accept really the thinking that most Adventists would have. That is, most Adventists would look at what we have here on these charts as nonsense. They would say you can't take the gematria of 
Ibsen and Abdon and multiply them together and get 1872. And you can't take, um, you know, the fact that one uh, judge for seven years, one for 10 and one for eight, that that's July 18th. Some, you know, they would just say you can't do that. So, um, you know, so what we're doing is contrary to what the December 6, 2020 declaration has stated. <clears throat> now we're going to have um, uh, a date there, February 24th, 2021. And that's going to be the formalization of this. Does anybody know what that date is? Why do we have it there? We didn't write down what it is. And it's not a date that we usually deal with. Okay, it's not Odilio's message. Because you're thinking of February 12, This is going to be 88, 80 days after December 6, 2020. There's an increase of knowledge. Okay. I'm not sure if I even remember, so... So, um, um. So that's going to be um, let's see if I can So we have a way mark and we don't even remember what it is. So that's pretty good. Um, so it's going to be a Wednesday. So anybody have any ideas what it might be? I think I know now. Uh, especially because it's it's a Wednesday. And there's not usually much that happens on midweek. But I'm not 100% certain. Hmm. So I have no idea.
Well, I'm looking in my scribbled notes from way back, <laughs> and yeah. it says uh, it says that you had a paper written uh, two twenty twenty one, published to two twenty four twenty one. Ah, so whatever paper that was, that must be it. Right. So uh, th thank you. So this is the paper, um, which I'm just going to bring up here. Yeah. So I was thinking it was a paper, but now I think I remember which one. Um, okay. I don't want to be there. I want to be there. I always have trouble finding this paper. Yeah, so this is a paper uh, that I published on February 24, 2021. It's called Three Days. So this makes sense now. And, and you can see how uh, I'm just going to bring it up here. So this is called Three Days in Ezra and Nehemiah and their relation to the event, to events from December 4th to 6, 2020. Right. So we're going to be examining the 20th day of the ninth month as it relates to uh, that date. Right. So because that we have that 20th day of the ninth month date there, it's going to be in the story of Ezra. And it's also going to be related to the story in Nehemiah because there's three days there. Um, so this paper is published then on Academia. And so it's gonna deal with the Strange Wives, understanding the events from December 4th to 6th, which requires some background and a little known biblical date seen in Ezra 10 verse uh, nine, right? And that's gonna be the 20th day of the ninth month. So we can see how this is a formalization of that message that arrives on December 6th, right? We should be able to see that that makes sense as a formalization. So we can clearly see what the darkness is. It's this marriage to the strange wives. And that message is going to arrive to this movement with the events of December 6, 2020. We're going to recognize this as we have this increase of knowledge about what happened on that date. And that's going to be formalized in this paper published on February 24th, 2021. Right. So then we're going to have 220, 220 days to October 2nd, 2021. Now, October 2nd, 2021 is going to be 300 days after December uh, 6, 2020. And this is going to be the conflict that occurs. Um, with the American group, uh, at that time, I'm doing these studies on the book of Hebrews, but there's going to be a conflict that happens with uh, Daniel Fontenot, myself, and Mark Johnson um, over, I'm not even really sure what it was over. I mean, I know it was the discussion regarding um, amalgamation. Right, what it meant in the spirit of prophecy, and they were trying to apply it, that our DNA is being changed by uh, a vaccine, which makes no sense. You know, you just can't do that, right? You know, if you understand what DNA is and what a vaccine is, I mean, you can't, you can't modify people's DNA, maybe with radiation and you can degradate it, but you're not going to make us into a new... Uh, um, what they call transhuman, something better, right? Um, so anyway, that's going to be October 2nd. Now that's going to be the empowerment of this. So that's 222 or 220 days later. And then we're going to, that's going to be 84 days before December 25th, 2021. 84 is 12 times 7, right? So, um, so that's interesting. And that's going to be the message of Ibsen. Now, if you take the name of Ibsen and you go to the Gematria, so I'm just I'm just going to do this so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the Gematria calculator. 
I've already put Ibsen in there, right? And I can blow this up like that. And you can see that this the normal sum, sum is 52. Now that's interesting as well, because in, in the story of Nehemiah, there's gonna be the 52 days, right? Um, but you know, in the story of Ezra, I don't know of a 52 day period, but that's Ibsen. But then we can also multiply each of those. So I is nine, B is two, Z is 26. So they're just the numbers uh, within our alphabet. And if we multiply those together, we get 6,552. Now this number is itself interesting. So I'm just going to go here to, so 6552, and um, this number, you know, it can be, it has a number of divisors. Um, if we divide it by 252, we get 26, right? If we divide it by, that's what I do there. Six five five two, and um, if I divide it by, I think it's one one seven, I get fifty six, right? So, so there are different numbers that I can divide it by. Um, it has altogether forty eight divisors, and um, so it, it can be divisible by fifty two, right? If we divide it by fifty two. Um, it's going to be 126. So that is if, so technically we can say if we take the gematria of Ibsen, which is 52, and we multiply it by a 126, that is if we take it and we multiply it by December 6th, right, which is that 126, then um, we get this number, which is the normal product of his gematria, right? So I can I can do this, let me just go here. So normal product is six five five two which 126 times 52. And you can't see that because you're just looking at the calculator. So here's what I just did. I just put this in the chart here. Now, Aran notes that 273 days is uh, 6,552 hours. Um, and so we can put that here. Oops. I'm just going to try to get this to... So you can see how these things fit together. We have the symbol there for the message to the Levites. We have the normal product of Ibsen's 52. And if we just divide it by 52, we get 126. Um, so 126 times 52 is this number. And we can see that it makes sense that it's placed there at December 6th. So those are things that you know we can look at now that we we couldn't really uh, see before. That is, we as we go through, we start to glean some of these details, uh, but they weren't really necessary for us to create the line. But but they help us to establish that line. Um, really, the way that we establish this line primarily is with the twentieth day of the ninth month and uh, the one twenty six, so that we start that as the time of the end. And then we can see we have a paper that's 80 days later. And 
220 days after that is the conflict with the, the movement that really um, officially in some ways, I mean, I say officially, I mean, for the first time, I'm really banned from anything within this movement after July 18, 2020. So I'm I'm going to be forbidden from ever uh, presenting again. Um, now, the Canadian group had sort of already banned me from presenting again. They didn't want me to present. Um, but definitely here at the American group, and we can see the significance then the 300 days, right? So we get that, of course, from Gideon, but it's part of these symbols of these lines. And then the fact that this is 84 days before December 25th, 2021, which again is the 20th day of the ninth month. <clears throat> so that's the message of Ibsen. Now, we always look at these verses and try to find these symbols. Here we just have the name Ibsen himself gives us this symbol, right? It gives us a symbol that ties us to this way mark. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, so we're going to go back to the verses themselves and see what else we can glean from them. Um, so, so he's Ibsen of Bethlehem. So this is, of course, the house of bread, and you can see the significance there, right? He arrives, you know, as this testimony against the marriage to the false wives, and it's the house of bread, right? Bread referring to God's word. And the study of God's word. We can see his 30 sons, his 30 daughters, and his 30 stepdaughters, right? Uh, anything else that that we can see there? So, I mean, we didn't put that in the chart. We didn't put the 30, 30, 30. Um, but we can... I just put that there and I need to sh sh share this screen here okay <clears throat> now he judged seven years so that seven years obviously is a symbol uh, symbol of the week of Christ study for one um, Uh, he's going to be buried in Bethlehem. So when it says, you know, then died Ibsen, was buried in Bethlehem, I mean, uh, I mean, these judges all have to die, but he's Ibsen of Bethlehem. Okay. Then we have Elon, a Zebulonite. Now, and, and the other thing is, was there anything that we could take this and then I mean, we have that, the fact that the message is formalized with that paper, right? So we have the 80, 80 days and then the 220, dividing the 300. Is there anything else that we can take from here to help with those waymarks? I mean, we don't have like this verse fits this waymark. We don't have something that I, I don't see anything that gives us like February 26th that I remember that we found. Um, the one thing we could do with Ibzan is we could look at 78 as a span of time. So we hadn't done that before when we had first drawn up this line. So I'm going to do it this way, uh, just pull these boxes. 
So let's go here. So his Hebrew number is 78, right? So I'm going to take this uh, 78 date. So Hebrew 78, it's not so Hebrew 78, Ibzan. Okay, we're going to say 78 days. Now, we have 80 days to February 24th. So, Angela, what did you say in your notes about that paper? Just see if this fits here with that. I, I wrote that you had said you 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 had had written it on 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 the twentieth of Feb, but it was published the twenty fourth. Okay, so that would give the twentieth would give me twenty six, right? So or seventy six, pardon me, not twenty six. So seventy six days. So so seventy eight days, of course, isn't eighty days. Okay, so Judges 12, verse 9, reminds me of Ellen White's statements, Angela wrote here, um, about those leaving the heavenly path or SDA being replaced by others who embrace the truth, daughters sent abroad, daughters-in-law joining. Well, that's interesting. Um, well, it also reminds me of uh, dealing with those that many... Uh, tribe after tribe leaves us, or company after company leaves us and tribe after tribe joins us during the loud cry. Um, so yeah, so daughters are being sent out and daughters are being received. So that's interesting, daughters in law. Um, So anyway, I write this paper called Three Days. Um, and, and I'm going to start it actually on, on February 12th. So it's going to take me uh, 12 days before I get it uh, published. Um, so, you know, so I start researching it, writing it. Now, the new paper was uh, finished yeah, on February 20th. I'm going to send it out. So that's, uh, I send it uh, to Colin, send it to Iran the next day. Um, so on February 21st, uh, I'd updated the paper. And then I'm going to publish it on the 24th. So that's that's what I have here. Okay, uh, Elon has a product of one two six zero zero. So, Aran notice this. Um, so we're, we're going to just kind of set that aside for right now. So if we do Elon, I'm going to go to. The schematria calculator again. Um, he has the normal product of one, two, six, um, and the normal sum being forty-six. So one, two, six, zero, zero. So we get the one twenty-six there. And Abdon, the product is one six eight or seventy days, one six eight zero. 
So that's interesting. Okay, so, so we have some details to look at here that we haven't looked at before. Um, now, as far as the, oops, this is my academia thing here. So let's go back here. So, so we're going to have, um, so let's do the same for all of these. So we're just going to have a box over here because I can't really fit that all into here. Um, so I could probably put his normal product in here. Yes. Hmm. So where, where do I put this here? I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. How much room do I got? I'll put this off to the side. I'm going to take this from here just so that these are a little more compact. Gematria is 52. We'll just say the sum is better. Take up the 78 days for now. We'll just put, there's his Hebrew number. There's the sum. There's the normal product. We can we do an analysis of these things, right? And then we're going to do the same for Elon. So Elon, why do we have a different font here? That's why. Okay. Sorry about that. This one better. Now, the, uh, what was his Hebrew number for Elon? Three fifty six. So we don't know yet with these what what they're going to be, um, what they mean yet because we haven't done the analysis. Now his sum is forty six. And the normal product was one, two, six, zero, zero. Right. And we didn't really do any analysis analysis of that. So 356 is double 178. So 178 is the, an iteration of 187. It's also the number of days from the autumnal equinox to the spring equinox. So one, uh, so 160, 187 and 178 equals 365 days in a year. So it's 187 days from the spring to the autumnal equinox and 178 from the autumnal to the spring. Okay, so, so that's interesting. Um,
we have then. So that's the normal product for Elon and then Abdon. We have the Hebrew number, should have that rememberized. 5658. And his normal product was 16800. You'd probably just put product in there. I don't know if I need to put normal. I'm just going to put product. It's just uh, we do have, you know, okay. So we know that this is uh, seven days is, and that should be just one zero, right? And, uh, is that correct? 70 days. And the significance of that is, is um, um, that we have uh, with Abdon, he has these 40 sons and 30 nephews. And they have three score and 10 ass colts, right? So that's going to bring us to uh, that's going to bring us to um, that uh, symbol there, seventy. So I'm just reading what Angela's writing. So she asks um, the 187 and the 178. So. So the thing we know is from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month is 187 days. And that's based upon the, the equinoxes. That's why God set it up that way. Right? So, the, so you have the same number of days from the spring to the fall equinox as from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. Now, you can have the first day of the first month fall on because it's going to be the first new moon after the spring equinox. So it can occur like, like right after, depends on what you call the equinox. Um, and so it can occur that it's on you know, the, the day of the autumnal equinox, you have the 10th day of the seventh month. Um, but the question is, what does this uh, signify for us today? Well, the one is we have these uh, iterations of 187 of July 18. Um, why did God set it up this way? I mean, it, it, it's pretty remarkable when we start to think about all of these connections with 187 and 178. Um, so I don't know what it signifies beyond that. So I don't know if I can answer the question in that way. That's what we have. With each of these, we have these uh, pretty significant symbols, right? So we have, you know, something that's just with their names and with the product of their names. Um, we can see that it, it ties us into these lines of the 1260 and the 70 days. So that's going to be the week of Christ study as well. 70 representing, um, you know, seven. We can just take it that way. 168, that's the number of hours in a week. Uh, the 46 would tie us to Millerite history from Elon. So a repeat of Millerite history. Now we have, um, so that anyway, we, we finished the first part. We, we haven't given us... We haven't given symbols here for October 2nd and February 24th as dates.
but we can see that the events that happen are going to be connected with December 6, 2020. Maybe there's more that we can see. So maybe there's something in 78 days. Um, I don't know. Then we have um, the second angel arriving. So that's Elon. And he's going to have the 126 symbol in the product of his gematria, of his name. And of course, 46 with that symbol. So December 25th, 2021. Um, that's going to be the end of our 777 structure. We know that there's an invitation made to the movement in connection with that, which is rejected. So we have an invitation connected with the 20th day of the ninth month. <clears throat> And so all of the light that had come to us after December 6th, February 24th, we have this paper. It's sent out, right? It's published. It's sent to people like Colin. And in some ways, it's disregarded, right? Because there is in that paper a very clear message about uh, how we study God's word. But the events of October 2nd um, become an excuse for people to disregard the message of chronology in its specifications. You know, so it, it, I don't believe it's about me personally, that people just don't personally like me. I really do believe that um, the truths that are being presented are not welcome. And even prior to any conflict, there was already this tension. So we know that people were talking about me personally, but it really wasn't about me. That's not why they talk about me as a person, because of something about me. They're talking about me as a person because I'm attached to a message that they don't want to hear, right? So that gives them a reason. And, and I believe that there's jealousy involved. You know, I can't judge other people's hearts. I can't tell you what other people are thinking. I can just tell you what I um, experienced. So Ellen G. White on her 78th year when she had the vision of the fireballs. Okay, so maybe that's something to do with this 78. Um, but when we get to December 25th, 2021, we have another message arrive. Now, there's this invitation to this divorce Right. So that divorcement's going to begin December 25th, 2022. And we have this period of time symbolically from December 25th, 2022 to the first day of the first month in 2030. So we know we're in that history now because we're in 2023. And and connected to that, there is also the first day of the 10th month symbol attached to. Um, January 11th, 2023. So, I mean, we can put January 11th there, but it's going to be clearly marked out when we look at uh, Samson. So we don't really need to write it in here. So again, this darkness is the strange wives. That should be clear. I don't know if we need to write that in the chart particular, particularly. But we have all of these interesting aspects uh, one thing I did is, you know, I added, I tried to look at these as spans of time. Um, so just dealing with Abdon. So we're going to get there. Uh, but for now, let's look at Elon. So we have Adilio's presentation and Colin's presentations. Those are there. And, and Adilio presents the two 1629 symbol. And then uh, when we get to November 24th, 2020, we're going to notice the 2688, and this is based upon um, an understanding of the 1629, among other things. So if I just do a quick search here. Um, so we're going to have that in the story. It's this study right here. So this study... Um, 
Now, we're going to have February 24, 2022. This, this happens to be the war in the Ukraine. And so that was placed in there. We can see that's one year after the publication of the, uh, the paper on the three days in Ezra and Nehemiah. And it's 273 days before November 24, 2022. Um, now, we had from November 9, 1989, 11,900 days. It brings us to June 9, 2022. Now, June 9 is uh, the fourth anniversary of when time, predicting of dates, predicting of events with connection with time, arrives to this movement. That is, Jeff is going to close June 9th with prayer at 9-11, and the next day, Parminder's going to uh, present that we're going to be time setters, right? So that's going to be the fourth anniversary of that. Um, and, and that's going to be 168 days before November 24, 2022. Now, November 24, 2022 is um, the fourth anniversary of Thanksgiving, right, of the Thanksgiving study. Now, the thing about that is from June 9th, 2018, it's 1,629 days to November 24, 2022. Right? So we, we went through this study before. I'm not going to go through it in detail. But that's what we're referring to. We're referring to this November 24th, 2022 date. It's Thanksgiving. And it's connected to the presentation of Odilio, which has this 1629 symbol. And so we're applying this 1629 symbol as days, and we're saying that it's going to give us November 24th, 2022. And we notice on that date that it's 2,688 days to April 5th, 2030. That's an exclusive count at the end of November 24th to the beginning of April 5th, 2030. And that, that number is an application for an additional extension of time in the American taxes. It's a form number, 2688. So, so those dates, those symbols are given to us at that time. Right. So November 24th and... Um, Odilia study, the 1629. So when we look at these, that's why we have these symbols here, 1629 and 2688. Okay. Now, 2688 itself as a number, uh, one of the significances of it is it can be divided by 168, and it's 16 times. So 16 times 168. And so we have that uh, in, in the study as well. So that's another symbol. Okay, so, so there's lots of symbols here. I don't know if we... We're going to explain them all here, but I, I remember, I'm just going through the ones I remember. We know we have the 49 days between Colin and the Delio study, and that's going to be much more significant in um, the story of Samson. So we're going to go over some of these dates again there. And um, so we're saying that the formalization is a Delio study, and the empowerment is where we apply the 1629 to this November 24th, 2022 date. Okay, so Psalm 39, verse four. I just wanna see what that says. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how, to, how frail I am. Now, of course, in in, in that verse, Psalm 39, verse 4, um, you know, uh, he wants to know his end and the measure of his days, you know, how long he's going to live. But we use these measurements of time, how old we are at certain dates, days we were born, as symbols. They become, they become significant when they become part of the line. Right. Um, 
people giving certain messages, having certain numbers connected with them. Now, again, these symbols are not numerology in the commonly understood way. That is, we're not using them to perform magic, to control God. We're not, you know, giving ourselves a specific name so that we have a number that's going to be so that we can be successful financially or anything like that. And I've known people like that who uh, use numbers in that way. What we do is we're looking at, and, and the thing that I have to emphasize is we're looking at Bible prophecy and we're looking at symbols. And those symbols can be attached to people, to events, to camp meetings, to things that are important in this movement. And to us personally, in our personal life, they can be a witness to us um, that God is speaking to us. But what he's going to show us always is how frail we are. Um, and this, to me, is really the important aspect of understanding these prophecies. Um, we need to know how uh, destitute, this word uh, that's translated as frail, means uh, it's it's chadel, chadel, probably be closer. It means vacant, that is ceasing or destitute. He that forbeareth, frail, rejected. Um, so, so we're frail, we're destitute. The reason God is giving us all of these, these lines is so that we learn to depend upon him. None of this is to exalt self or to give us a false sense of security. It's to show us our sins. It's to bring a conviction to us. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And he gives a power to overcome sin. That's why God speaks to us through his word. People can use numerology to and, and anything, actually, uh, to make to exalt themselves. People can use the truth. They can use religion. You know, even the truth in religion to make themselves feel better about themselves without actually confessing and forsaking their sins. So when God measures our days, whether he does that literally or prophetically, we, we understand that this is the purpose of this, is to show our need and dependence upon God. And, and verse 5 says, Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth. Now, a handbreadth is a system of measure that we use. Um, we use it in um, measuring time, right? Measuring things, any kind of measure. Um, and mine age as nothing before thee, right? So even though we can have, you know, these dates of our birth, none of these things are anything without God. The purpose of them um, is to show our dependence upon God. Uh, truly, every man in at his best state is altogether vanity. Even all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. And the next verse is interesting, too. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. Right. So we need to remember this at all time when we're studying these things. You know, the main problem that we have in this movement, the main problem we have in life in general, is we think of ourselves as better than we are. We are envious when other people are exalted. If, if we had, did not have this envy and jealousy, if we sought the best of others, this movement would not be in the condition that it is. And, and that should be quite evident to everyone of, of what's happened in this movement. That the things that we say about others behind their back, about their character, without addressing the truths of God's word, um, this is not the way of Christ. Everything should be done openly. 
So, so this is what this line is addressing. <clears throat> so we, we have these events. The second angel's message arrives. And this message is connected to, it, it's the message of Elon. It's the 46, right? And it's going to be uh, Collins and Odilio's presentations that are going to have this message arrive and have this message formalized. And it's going to be empowered on November 24th, 2022. But then we have these 31 days to December 25th, 2022. Now we could count to December 24th. So on December 24th, um, we join with the Canadian group, I believe it is. I apologize for the one year absence from their studies. It's something that I did. I gave them this time and space. People didn't want me around. I, I did watch some of the studies after December 25th. And I think I might've made a couple of comments um, but they were just, you know, pointing out some details. But I didn't participate in trying to press anything uh, to other people. I wasn't trying to convince them of anything or or whatever. Um, but when we get to December 25th, we get under this really strong conviction that we need to reconcile with our brethren, that we need to come together to the upper room. And instead of looking at the faults of others, we look at our own faults and we confess those. And we try to reconcile uh, with the movement. So we put out this, this hand on December 24th. And then on December 25th, which is the Sunday, which is the first day of the 10th month, which is why we're marking it here. Um, we're going to begin this studies on the line simply pre presented. So we're going to make this invitation that the things that we had been studying for the past year, starting December 26, 2021, when we started the understanding of the lines, we're going to simplify for, for whoever wants to watch them because there was a complaint that things are complicated. Uh, we don't know how many people watched, uh, you know, from the Canadian group, watched the videos. Um, but we do know that there was really a lack of interest. Now, Part of it could be that it's on Sundays, but people can watch the videos afterwards. But they're the least watched videos that, it, that we put out. People just aren't interested in examining these things. So, so that's going to be a third angel's message arriving. Now, we didn't, in these lines, do a zoom into Ibzan or a zoom into Elon or a zoom into Abd, as we did with Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. Right. We, we didn't do that. Now, one is we don't have a great deal of information, but um, we, we can see that these way marks are expanded upon in the story of Samson. And, and in other ways. And I, I'm not sure, you know, if it would be needful to do this at this time, but I'm I'm saying that we could uh, connect these things. Right. So they, they could have some kind of connection in some way. Now, um, now there we have the fourth angel arriving as April 5th. Now, that's just simply from the fact we have the first day of the 10th month. And we have the first day of the first month. Right. And we have other lines that connect these as well. So, uh, you know, for instance, in here, we could just simply borrow this here. Here, I'll borrow this one. You know, you can go from November 24th. Right. So we can put in this, the number of days here. Um, I'm just going to put it like this, two, six, eight, eight days, and that's going to be oops, 168 times 16.
So there we have that, right? So we have that symbol there. So that brings us to April 5th, 2030. Um, this 718 days, you can see, of course, that's a symbol of July 18th. So to take this December 6th and connect it to November 24th, that becomes significant. Now, the 749 days from December 6th to December 25th, so that's going to be a little longer. Um, that's 107 times 7. Okay, so... So we're just going to be, we've got a few more minutes. We've got about 10 more minutes before we complete this study. And then uh, um, any questions so far? Any questions about what we see here? Now, we got the 70 there, um, the 70 days, the 70 with Abdon. Um, so this December 25th, 2020 date, uh, what would be the significance of the 70 days? The, the product, the 70, right? So he has, now we notice it's it's divided as 40 and... 20, right? So he has 40 sons and 30 nephews, I believe. And 70 ass colts. So what's the significance there? Okay, yes, so Angela's pointing out the 16. Um, so the 16 representing the 8 and the 8 from 2 Chronicles uh, 29, the cleansing of the sanctuary. So that, that's the way I look at 16 as 8 and 8, right? Um, so, I mean, it could be written as, um, you know, Eight plus eight times one sixty-eight. But um, now, so we have these these sons of 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 Elon of Abdon, right? So he has forty sons, thirty nephews. He judges Israel eight years. His uh, his sum is thirty six, which I should have put in the chart as well. Keeps telling me that this is spelled wrong. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to open this up now. So sum is sum is thirty six. So we have 52, 46, 36.
Okay, so we have these spans of time, seven and 18 years. So July 18. So seven and 10 years and eight, right? So we can take that as a symbol of July 18. Now we have that 718 also symbolized going to November 24th. And we have this other 52 times 36 giving us 1872 for Abdon. Anything else we need to note? Yeah, so the 70 years obviously connects us to the 70 years, as Angela's pointing out. Um, so the and, and so we can see that there is the 70 years you know it has it comes from leviticus 26 it it applies to the three decrees right you're going to have the 220 connected with it um and the 2300 um so it's not just the babylonian captivity but you also have 70 years for the temple but the question i'd ask too about why is it separated as 40 and 30 we can see that this 4-3 combination occurs in Bible prophecy. You know, the first four churches, the last three. The, the first four trumpets, the last three. The first four seals, the last three. Right? The grouped in that 4-3 combination. Right? So, um, so we have that symbol there. It's it's divided in that way. But the question is, why is it divided in this way? Is it just to symbolize these these lines of prophecy? Um, there's probably more that we're missing here. You know, there's symbols dealing with, um, like, for instance, Abdon's the son of Hillel. Uh, Hillel is, just means to praise God. You get that from Hallelujah, which is to praise Yahweh. Um, and he's a pyrethonite. Which is kind of interesting here. Um, notice he's buried in pyrethon. Do you recognize the number here? Um, he's buried in pyrethon. So what does Pirathon tell us? Do you recognize the number 6552? Remember the product of Ibzan was 6552? So Ibzan and Abdon are connected by that same symbol, the 6552, which is 126 times 52, 6,552 hours in 273 days. So that wouldn't be a coincidence.
So I'm just going to put this here with abdin. Um, Pier Adon, Hebrew numbers 6552. Pirathon, pardon me, Pirathon. Okay. Okay, we're going to close with prayer. So we're done for now. Our time is up. Okay. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the time that we had here this morning. We ask for your spirit to continue to be with us throughout the day. Bring us together again to study your word, and your angels watch over it and care for each one. We pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.